Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, we have Diane from St. Louis County, Missouri, and she wanted to share her cryptid experiences that she had in the past. She has also experienced paranormal activity. Diane believes the paranormal activity goes hand in hand with the cryptid phenomenon, and she was wanting to share her point of view with everyone to possibly help open people's minds of the idea of everything being connected. Could it be possible that there are evil unseen forces on this planet that are manipulating our reality and deceiving people into believing a false idea in order to lead them away from the truth? It does state in the Bible that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. I've been trying to do what's right for a long time now and it's really easy to get off the beaten path and I am by no means perfect and I am always struggling so I am willing to hear other people's points of view to better understand the things that I have experienced and went through in the past. All right, everyone, let's dive into this cryptid and paranormal interview from the state of Missouri. Diane, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing excellent. Thank you so much for asking. Diane, if you would, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your encounters from the very beginning, please. Okay, I'll do my best. Um... I am born and raised in Missouri and uh, lived many different places, but my experiences mainly have been in Missouri. Um, I remember supernatural occurrences from when I was just a little kid, maybe even a baby. Um, it started out um, laying in my bed. I can remember seeing... Um, these little white, I don't know, white, sh white shadows, if that's possible, these white things like crawling down the wall. And, uh, and I remember screaming because they would scare me. Uh, I didn't know what they were, but I, you know, I, I remember that to this day. And, um, you know, when I told my mom about it, you know, just not too long ago, I said, yeah, did, did I ever tell you about this? She's like, I had no idea that was going on. And, but she's, um, you know, she doesn't really have a bent like I do. I've always been interested in the supernatural. Um, I've been a, a very fervent truth seeker all of my life, like truth at any cost. So, um, unfortunately, um, it kind of led me down some dark paths through my life, but the end is good. <laughs> That's what matters. Yeah. How old were you whenever you saw the white shadows crawling down the walls? I would say I had to be for, you know, still a toddler. Okay. Four, five, three to five, something. I was really, really young. I don't think I was in kindergarten yet. Okay. And this led you down the path of research and wanting to know more? Well, I, I'm not quite sure if that did. Um, I just think I am just made that way. I think we're all made that way, actually. I think we're, you know, it's my firm belief that <clears throat> uh, we're all created to have um, a, a desire to know the whys, the whats, the hows. Um, it's what drives science, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I've just always been, I'm an artist. That's kind of my lifelong profession. Um, worked, worked in many different, you know, capacities, but um, I've been able to draw very well um, since I was about the same age um, that I saw those things. I've could draw very well and paint very well without really any training. Um, so that's my gift. Um, so because I guess I'm sort of right brained um, in that way, um, that's what I lean to are things that are a little bit more creative or imaginary. Um, so maybe my desire for imaginary, mystical, mythical things has attracted certain energies. 
I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And it mm -hmm. sounds like you're creative. What else have you experienced after that? Um, well, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind and now this is, um, I just, I know there were some other things that happened when I was a kid, but, um, the, the most prominent thing that comes to mind was, um, I was a teenager, probably around 16, 17 ish. And I was hanging out, uh, I was in a band and was hanging out with the band members and we were, we just would drive around and do stupid junk all the time. And, um, but we were driving, um, along one of the main highways around here. And I remember, and this was nighttime and it wasn't that late, but it was dark out. I don't recall what time of year it was. Um, but I saw what appeared to be like a werewolf um run across a six lane highway and it crossed over and went into a, a catholic church <laughs> a church lot i know we were talking about catholic uh religion but it it ran into a catholic church lot and then you know into you know out of my view but I, nobody else saw this. Um, I guess I was the only one looking ahead and paying attention. Um, but I'm able to actually sketch this out to this day. And when people talk about Dogman and other cryptid things like that, um, I always remember that. I mean, it was very clear. And I, I can't really, so I guess it was frightening. It was more startling. And I had to kind of question whether or not I had actually seen this. But, um, you know, I was completely sober, um, stable-minded, and this is what I saw. Yeah. Can you describe the features on the creature? Um, it was completely black. Um, it was almost like a moving shadow, although unlike shadow creatures, it was not see-through. It was just like nothingness, black. Um, from the distance, I would say probably maybe a half to three quarters miles, mile away. Um, I... It was huge. It was huge. I mean, from the distance, I would say it'd probably be at least the size of a um, St. Bernard or something like that, like a very large animal. It had um, kind of like a buffalo. You know how buffaloes have really fuzzy heads and they're really fuzzy on top, like lions. It's almost like it had a mane. Um it was built a little bit like a, a pit bull, just giant um, up top, um, shoulder area, and then thin as it got back. I don't remember seeing a tail. It was too far away to see if there were any, like what shape of ears there were, but it was definitely on all fours. Yeah, that's creepy. Mm -hmm. I've seen the same thing, but it was like a gray color. Where did you see it? I was in Crawford County, Missouri, in a small town called okay. Cuba. And um, we were mm -hmm. on Highway KK, and I was driving. I was in the passenger seat with my friend Bruce, and we were road tripping that night, going down to the Merrimack River. And it was just getting dark, or actually it was dark time. And um, as we were going down the highway he saw a possum in the headlights and he stomped the gas. And, um, I was just thinking, you know, what are you doing? And as he almost hit that possum, this creature lunged out of the woods and it was just one giant like leap. And it came out of the woods and snatched up this possum, threw it up in its mouth and shook it around like a rag doll and tore back off into the woods. But this creature, it looked like a giant 
blue pit bull with like mange around its neck and the snout was more like um kind of like a hyena and um it had like a big chest really muscular but like as um you look towards the back like the back legs tapered down and they were smaller than like the front of this creature mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. what you described was pretty much similar just jet black they call those things right. hellhounds apparently i believe it <laughs> i yeah. believe that's probably straight out of <laughs> straight out of there mm -hmm. for sure yeah we almost hit yeah. it yeah well, you were close to it then. Mm -hmm. So how big would you say it was comparatively? Um, like if you ever seen a picture of a blue pit bull, it was like twice the size of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is creepy. Yeah. That gave me chills whenever you gave your description of the creature and I had to chime in mm -hmm. and tell you my, my encounter. <laughs> no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's good to know that, you know, we're not seeing things. We're not crazy. Yeah, I was in a band at the time, too. <laughs> oh, were you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I played uh -oh. metal. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we ought to have a conversation about our favorite bands. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, um, Diane, what else happened after that? What else did you experience? Uh, well, around that time, I don't think it was before that time, it it was around this time. Um, I was, you know, having some teenager issues like all teenagers do, but I, you know, um, got into, um, you know, out of rebellion, out of whatever, you know, um, my way of dealing with this was, um, was talking to a friend of mine and he actually gave me a copy of the satanic Bible. And, uh, you know, I, I sort of laughed at that because, um, you know, I was not raised religious or anything, you know, um, my relatives are all Catholic, but I never went to church. And so I always thought that that was, you know, mythological. And, um, so I actually started reading it because, Hey, you know, if my friend said this may be truth, I'm going to I'm going to investigate. So one day I was uh, in my room and this was broad daylight. It was really sunny. I think it was probably in the middle middle of the summertime. Um, well, I had um, some of those free, I don't know what they call them, floating shelves in my bedroom and had a bunch of junk, you know, typical teenage girl stuff. But I had a crucifix and it was a plastic crucifix um, sitting uh, on one of the shelves, the low one, and it was leaning up against the wall. It, was, it wasn't a very big one or anything, but it was something that I believe my grandmother gave me. And so it had some sentimental value. And um, but I was starting to read the satanic Bible. Um, and, you know, it starts out really psychological <laughs> and it draws you in and it tells you how important you are and how great you are and how powerful you can be. And then it does a paradigm shift in the middle of the book and it starts talking about how you could use this against people um, to gain power and control and yada, yada. And um, I remember at that time I had some wits about me and I said, well, this is this is BS. And I closed the book. And just as I did that, I looked up at the crucifix and it fell and it it. It fell as if like there was there was wasn't, you know, any big truck driving by or any any vibration. It just moved and it hung itself upside down um, like the, the bottom of it caught itself on the the arm that was holding the little wooden shelf. There's like little arms and then it's got a little crook in it somehow the the bottom of this crucifix hung 
got caught and it just hung upside down. And I just felt cold. I just, I knew that this was not right. (laughs) Even though I was not a believer, I was not religious or anything like that. This was just, you know, an artifact to me. Um, But this was, this scared me. And so I took the book and I threw it across the room. And then I think um, later I had my my mom or dad burn it because <laughs> I wouldn't I didn't want to touch it. Um, but that happened, and um, you know I think that that led me on not just that, but that persuaded me amongst other things to continue searching. Um, for truth. And, um, but there's always that, but, but, you know, my search for truth led me into many different, I started getting into astrology and the occult and new age stuff. And that was a life, almost a lifelong thing. Um, I studied all of that, um, really got into it most of my life. Um, and, you know, I did not, of course, when I was into this, um, my truth was mainly on the realm of healing. I wanted to be the change that I want to see in the world and I want to do good and I want to heal people. You know, the intent was okay. Um, but the, the direction, you know, I know now the truth, the direction was wrong, but, um, that was that was probably one of the most frightening experiences of my life. Yeah, that sounds terrifying. Whenever I was mm-hmm. having a lot of paranormal encounters at an old place I used to live at, I was reading like the Book of Enoch and um, just I don't know different books about like the paranormal and demons and things like that. And mm-hmm. I ended up burning some of those books. I quit reading the Book of Enoch and. Um, I don't know. At the time, I didn't really see that it was that bad because it was like Noah's um, grandfather or whatever. But I started thinking about it and it names like all the fallen angels or certain demons. And, you Mm -hmm. know, I think that just gives them power. But, um, yeah, I, I never read the book of Satan or the Bible, the satanic Bible. I think that would certainly cause things to happen. And, um, (laughs) you know, it. I'm sure a lot of listeners that, are tuning into this podcast can agree that giving things like that attention will cause um, experiences to happen. And um, I've also heard that Jesus will allow demonic attacks to change a person, change their course of life. And I think he uses the evil for good. Oh, certainly. Well, you know, he, he is in control of all things. And as it says, um, in the scriptures that all souls belong to God. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever played with the Ouija board? Mm, I probably did. I don't really remember, but I probably did. It, it was like an eight ball type of thing. I never took it seriously like um, like some people do, where they really in, want to intend on conjuring up spirits. Um, I kind of saw it for what it was. I think I did. I mean, the fact is made by Mattel, you know? Um, and I think it, it's so, it was sold in, um, uh, what was that toy store? Toys R Us. Us Yeah. They still sell it at Toys R Us and, um, you can go on walmart.com and find them. They got a bunch of different ones, but, um, yeah, I, I strongly advise people to stay away from that. Right. Right. And, you know, I mean, even something like that, you know, like I thought of that, the satanic Bible being like, what, it really? Come on. But I had no idea. It wasn't until that crucifix flipped upside down that I really said, oh, uh, maybe this stuff could be real. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that. um was an interest of of mine very short-lived but um 
like I said, I did continue um, to move in that direction of more of a, a cultish new age um, direction. Um, later on, uh, I had moved, um, I was probably in my mid twenties. I had moved to North Carolina and, uh, one of those evenings in North Carolina, I was there with, uh, my boyfriend at the time. We were walking along the beach. Um, can't remember exactly. It's like maybe the Outer Banks area. Um, we were walking along the beach and it was well after midnight, probably more like two or three in the morning. And um, we were we were walking northward. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there just there appears this giant black triangle and it had three lights on it. And it was floating in the air. And at that point in time, it was it was dark. And being on the Outer Banks, it's not like you're in, um, uh, let's say, a more populated, you know, beach area. There's a l- few lights, so you can see stars and stuff like that. But um, it hovered around, and there was no sound. And of course, you know, you you of course hear um, waves and that's going to distort anything. And, but I mean, literally there was no sound and this was back in, uh, 19 mid nineties. So, you know, I really don't know. I don't keep up on, you know, what the military is, you know, what they're using. I don't know. It could have been military, but this was back in the mid nineties. So, um, it was like it was hovering and it wasn't directly over us, but it was close enough to us to where it stopped. And it was obvious that it knew we were there and it was watching us. Um, and it hovered around just a, I don't, I don't know, m- maybe about 10, 12, 15 seconds or something. And then just at the speed of, like faster than light, it's like tachyon stuff. It moved, it, it, it just disappeared and went back the way it came north. There was no uh, revving of engines. There was no chemtrail, nothing. It was just completely silent. And the way that it just disappeared in north, it just, it went the, along the beach and just disappeared north. It was crazy. And um, I think we stood there for maybe two or three seconds before we looked at each other. I looked at him and I said, you saw that, right? And he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> and um, that's I, it's very weird, but that's the last we ever talked about it. Isn't that strange? Yeah, that is strange. I've seen the same thing. Once again, I've seen a giant black wow. triangle float over my place. And um, the strange part was there was no noise. It felt like whenever it hovered over the house, like the earth was being pushed back. Like I was moving backwards and that thing was sitting still because it was so big. And I would estimate yeah. it was probably like two or 300 yards across. Maybe not that big, but it was pretty darn big, completely mm-hmm. silent. And um, it had three glowing lights, but the back right light was brighter than the rest. Mm. Did you notice anything like that? Like one brighter light? No. No, I would have to say they were all the same and they, it definitely was not that big. Yeah. Unless it was, you know, unless my perception was completely off, but it seemed like it was pretty close to us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, it definitely wasn't as big as the one you saw for sure. Yeah, I'm just guessing because it was up there. It wasn't like super high up in the sky. It was actually pretty low, but I'm just um, mm-hmm. kind of estimating the size, really. Yeah, yeah. Did it did it move that fast? Really slow over the house. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. That's even more creepy, I think. 
Yeah, and what got my attention is um, I'm used to my Siberian Husky barking and whining whenever these UFOs pass over the house, and he'll just start, like, freaking out. So I knew Mm -hmm. he was freaking out. I was like, oh, man, something's coming, and I looked up, and it floated right over me, right over the house, across the yard, and into the woods. And I got to see it for, like, a good, I don't know, like, five to eight seconds, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the so, weird thing. Um, I'm out there trying to like listen for Bigfoot and see if they come back around and um I'm seeing UFOs. So like mm-hmm. I don't know, like my research turns from cryptid research to UFO research all the time. Hmm. They're I mean, they're connected. They have to be. I think so. Um yeah, I mean they're they're definitely from a different realm multi-dimensional um you know it's we're in a spiritual war and many people do not or will not even entertain that idea because and i didn't for a very long time because you know we live in a, such a physical world and we're so programmed to um, think in such materialistic, um, tangible ways that when you do speak of these things, um, otherworldly type of things, you're, you know, you, you're lucky if you just get weird looks. Most of the time you, you get called crazy. Um, people laugh at you. Um, so it's, it's good that, actually that more people are seeing these things now because um i think it's part of the truth being revealed yeah i think so too i recently recorded all my experiences and cryptid encounters and at first mm-hmm. i was like i'm only going to talk about the bigfoot stuff but <laughs> you know I, I started thinking like if i keep out all the paranormal things i experience i don't know if it's connected but if i keep it out i'm kind of lying you know if i just said oh it's just all bigfoot you know this is all the stuff i've seen they're natural physical creatures living out there and you know people don't Mm -hmm. know about them so i just decided to talk about everything the hellhound i heard like a dog man howl one time Mm -hmm. in the woods um there was like a little gray alien standing next to my bed one morning when I woke up and I couldn't move and um, I don't know. I I talked about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the paranormal experiences at the old haunted place because that stuff Mm. bothers me. Yeah. That's yeah. I don't, I used to be really, really into the uh, ghost hunting shows. And like you said, it was, um, the more you pay attention to those things, you will attract it. I mean, we live in an energetic dimension. We're electrical energetic beings. Absolutely. So, yeah. Oh, oh, well, um, trying to be chronological about this. Um, no, you're fine. The, the next Thing that I can think of is I was still in North Carolina. No, actually, I wasn't. Scratch that. Um, I had uh, moved to Georgia, and um, I was renting a house in a in a town outside of Atlanta. And um, this was shortly after my dad had passed away. And now I I won't get into my testimony or anything, but my dad passing away um, has a great deal to do with um, the beginning of my testimony um, to the faith that I have as a Christian. Um, But uh, this was I was in this house and um, I had known already that the owner of the house, I was renting the house from the owner and I had already known that. There was something a little off. <laughs> it was just, you know, I mean, I didn't think much about it. Um, you know, I I appreciate people who are eccentric, but this person who owned the house, um, I had asked them if I could store something in their attic, and they're like, "Well, 
you can, but but I don't want you to touch the dolls that are up there. <laughs> and um, so there there were indeed there were little figures and they they were dolls, I guess, but they were kind of like um gosh, I really don't even know what they were. I didn't want to touch them, you know, just out of respect. It's not out of like I really believe that there were there was any type of power to this, but I just out of respect for my landlord, she didn't want me to touch them, so I didn't touch them. So I don't know what really what they were made out of and I just stayed away from them because I didn't want to knock them over or anything. But um like um, probably like the Raggedy Ann dolls or like the creepy Megan no. dolls? Um, neither. Okay. Neither. They were like figurines, which are probably the most creepy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they were little. They were little figurines in various sizes, and they were all standing upright, almost like they're having a little, you know, convention in the attic. And you know, I again, I was out of respect. I put what I needed to put in the attic put that up there and, you know, left it. I didn't think about it, but shortly um, after my dad passed, I remember I had uh, experienced a a bit of a a loss in my life at that time, in addition to my dad passing. And so it was a little bit of an emotional time for me. So I was um, laying down one evening and, um, was just emotionally in turmoil and um, was crying. And, and and I remember looking at the ceiling and I saw a shadow um, kind of like a blobby. It wasn't in a, in a human form. It was like a blob, but it was definitely a shadow um, crawling along the, the ceiling above me. And it crawled across the ceiling, almost almost the length of my bed, and then made a sharp right, and then went into the um, the fireplace. There was a flue, you know. It was like a, it was an old house, so it was like a um, the chimney was um, brick, and it was you know in the room. You could see it. It went into through the brick and disappeared into the chimney. And uh, at that point in time, you know, I'm kind of in my emotional state, and I just was like, "Hmm, maybe that's my dad." Um, you know, that's how I rationalized it. You know, I now know, thank God, the truth that that's not my dad. It wasn't would never be my dad but it was it was definitely something that was um startling and didn't feel good you know it was like I don't really want to be seeing that and so um you know I'm sure it had not sure but I suspect it had something to do with the um (laughs) the figurines the doll figurines that were up in the attic I don't know yeah, that is creepy, and yeah, that certainly wasn't your dad. Your dad would never try to scare you like that, and um, it just sounds like you're um, you're open to this type of stuff, and um, it's attracted to you, and you're attracted to the, attracted to that kind of stuff. So um, maybe you opened up like a doorway back in the day, and it's a result oh, yeah. of that activity. Absolutely, hmm. absolutely, I opened a lot of doorways. And, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that, you know, when people talk about their, I hear people talk about their Bigfoot encounters. Um, I mean, the the first thing I think is, you know, what doors are open? What, what doors could be open here? Um, I hear a lot of people talk about, um, how kind they are, how maybe their lives were saved um, by, by, a, by a creature. Um, I always have to go back to the word of God because that's the absolute truth to me. 
um, the word says that even Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So um, there are a lot of things, a lot of people with evil intent, they can still do good things in this world. So um, I don't I don't allow stories of um, beneficence from creatures. Um, I don't allow them to sway me to, to believe like, Oh, well, I should really try to contact them and, you know, maybe witness to them or something. I don't know mm. because, um, in, in the times that I did experience what I believe to be, um, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Sabe, whatever you want to call it, cryptid. Um, I, was able to calm the situation down and I believe avert any further um, connection by proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I have seen that work. It has worked time and time again. I've not had to use it that often, but when I have used it, it's worked. Um, I have um, I've walked around, I've lived on a, a 40 acre homestead, um, for about three years. Um, and it's, it's in the middle of a national forest. So it's heavily wooded. Um, and, uh, the first experience I had there was about three and a half, four years ago. I was in the middle of the woods trying to clear a space for, um, some fruit trees. And, um, I heard knocking like as if the same kind of sound you would hear if somebody was knocking really hard on a really solid wood door. And it was, um, I, I mean, I, I've heard uh, it could have been a woodpecker, but I don't think so. Um, I've, I've heard woodpeckers in the woods. Um, this was a little too deliberate. Do you know what I mean by that? Just too deliberate. Yeah. So they were loud and, knocks out in the national forest? Yeah. Well, it was. it sounded like it was on the property, mm. but it was in the direction. The, the property is... Um, it's surrounded by national forest on two sides. Okay. Are we so talking about on, the Mark Twain national forest? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, Mark Twain national forest is gigantic. It's mm -hmm. all over the place in Missouri. So, um, but this was, a you know, along a small portion of one of the smaller portions of it. But, um, then, I heard a loud crack and it sounded as if like literally someone hit a home run, you know, like they hit a ball and it went crack or smack. Um, and it was something you wouldn't hear in, in the middle of the woods. It was very deliberate, very loud and almost as if it was directed at me. And I, I fell to my knees, like as if I was been shot at, like I was trying to defend myself and I felt the first thing I did is just get to the ground. So whatever is making this noise would not see me. I wanted to get low and I just kind of laid on the ground for a little bit and was looking around really quiet, trying to hear anything else. And I, after that, I didn't hear anything, but, um, I definitely had the feeling that I, I was being watched and um, I thought in my mind that it possibly could be um, maybe a hunter, some dude in the woods. Um, but I would have heard something else. I would have heard walking. I would have heard leaves rustling or something. It just would have been, there would have been some evidence of that. It just was quiet after that. So that was, that was my first 
one of my first experiences with um, what I believe to be a cryptid. Um, since then, um, since I've lived there, I had lived there full time for three, three and a half years. I've done a lot of exploring out in the woods and into the forest. And um, down by the the southern portion of the property along the National Forest, um, I've seen numerous evidences of intelligent bending and twisting of um, trees, um, trees that were purposefully bent over um, and notched under other um, trees, tree limbs. Um, not any really big structures, but smaller structures, a whole lot of X's. Um, kind of almost like uh, weaving, a little bit of weaving. And um, I've also seen trees that were about maybe 10 feet up, completely cracked in half. And um, they were living, they were tree, green trees. They weren't dead trees that just snapped. They were trees that were once alive. It looked like something just came by 10 foot up and went snap and snapped it. And there, there were, they weren't giant trees, but I would say they were probably at least six, seven inches in diameter. Yeah, that sounds like Sasquatch activity to me. There's a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, that I've talked to that show me like, deadfall and they're like that's sasquatch and look at that tree that fell on that fork you know and you can tell it's like rotten <laughs> trees but what you described is to a t real bigfoot activity yeah i mean i i definitely want to be devil's advocate in that and and rule it out uh because again my purpose is truth and not just dramatic um mystery um so i you know when i see stuff like that i look around because there's plenty of deadfall, believe me. But I look around to see if there is indeed deadfall around. And, you know, when I see stuff like that, um, there usually is not. And one is really close to the cabin. Um, it's a, a probably about a 15 foot um, cedar tree, completely just bent over. Um, and just really cleverly notched, um, underneath a crook in another tree, making a perfect arch. I mean, it's, it's like, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's like, this is, this is kind of intelligent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's geometry to it and you can tell a lot of it. If you find it fresh, you know, you can tell that something recently broke it and, um, you know, like whenever I found that stuff, I know that it didn't rain or there wasn't strong winds. And um, a lot of the stuff would happen in areas that I would hang out at, places I would mm -hmm. sit when I was deer hunting. I'd go back to a chair and the cedar tree I was sitting under was snapped in half and it was completely fresh and the top was laying next to the chair. And I'm like, man, I was just there last night. There wasn't any rain, any wind, nothing like that. And um, that was before I knew about Bigfoot actually being a real thing whatever it may be and um I, I you know i just thought to myself maybe it was bigfoot and you know just laughed it off and didn't think any more of it till years later that i had activity here wow so um when did you start getting into this um shoot i've always been into bigfoot like i'd always watch the finding bigfoot shows and listen to sasquatch okay. chronicles and I mean, part of me believed and part of me just thought, you know, they were made up stories, but I always kept it in the back of my mind that it was real. So, I mean, I would say over probably about, I don't know, like 13 years, probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I need to backtrack a little bit because this is one thing that I mentioned to you. I actually have a photograph of this and I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Um, this this ties into you know what you and I were talking about how um, our mental state our mindset um, we can actually attract things and call things into 
our, peri our periphery. Um, this was um, probably, let's see, back 2017-ish. Um, I had um, moved back to the um, St. Louis area and I was on one of my regular walks. Um, I like to walk regularly and um, there's a particular um, park uh, not too far from where I live and it's a really nice, it's a, it's a county park so it's maintained but it's got a lot of wooded areas and it's also um, uh, along the Missouri River. So wherever there's a river, I'm happy, you know, it's, it's cool with me. So, um, I spent a lot of time at this park and, and during that time was yet another time, um, I was, uh, going through, um, some tumultuous, you know, times in my, you know, my life at that time. And, and I was not in, in good spirits, uh, literally and figuratively, figuratively. Um, I was um, at that particular time um, really focused uh, on some um, rotten things that, you know, had been done to me and things that had happened. And I was in that state of unforgiveness. I would have to say it was extreme unforgiveness and bitterness. And I believe it was that state that conjured up this creature. So I was in the middle of this park and walking up hills and, you know, getting getting good exercise. That was my therapy. Um, but I was also taking pictures and I, I, I'm a photographer at heart. So I was taking a bunch of pictures and um, snapping photographs of some really interesting, um, I think, it, like, um, milk thistle plants um they're kind of spiky little weeds but they're very beautiful uh when they start coming up and it was sometime in early spring i think because they were just starting to come up um in this area and i was um getting close-ups of these weeds because i just thought they were just so pretty um and uh i stood up and I, you know, I remember like I had just been through like a long rant as I was walking about, you know, how angry I was and, you know, me thinking that I was actually doing some good, like this is therapy, but actually by me recounting and reliving things that hurt me, I was actually making it stronger. And, um, so, um, anyway, I was taking these pictures of, of these weeds and I stood up and I was going through the pictures to see what they look like if I needed to kind of refocus or something. And I looked at one of these pictures and I was just, just. I don't know the emotion to explain this. I was shocked. I saw a face, very clear face. And it was a spooky, creepy face. And it was like a kind of face that you would um, see in like one of those um, really creepy, evil elf, um, like elves, um, like a big smile, real sinister. Um, and I said, this can't, this can't be, this has to be a trick of the light. So I went right back to the, the weed that I was photographing and I said, I got to do this again. I'm going to re, you know, I'm going to re photograph this in the exact position. Cause it wasn't like I took the picture and then a couple days went by or even, you know, uh, you know, a handful of minutes. I was like, immediately saw this. I immediately went back to it and started photographing all around there to see um, if I could get and capture exactly that trick of the light that could have been, but I, I couldn't, whatever it was had disappeared 
And, um, you know, cause I, I, I got as close as I could to the exact angle and there's nothing in any of the other pictures that could even explain this sinister face. And I've sent, I have not shared this picture with many people. Um, but the very few people who I've shared it with have been creeped out by it. Um, bona fide creeped out. Yeah, that sounds creepy. Are you going to send it to me? I'd like oh, to yeah. see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I mean, you have permission to whatever, use it. Um, if it helps, you know, my main goal, agenda, ulterior motive, if you will, is to um, speak truth and um, let people know that their thoughts and their, their hearts and their state of mind really does matter. Um, what they think is, you know, can really attract things to you. And, you know, um, it doesn't matter what your, your faith is. I mean, we all, we all experience hurt. Um, and some of us handle it a little bit more logically, <laughs> Some of us handle it a little bit more dramatically, but either way, um, unforgiveness is such, I mean, there's a reason why Jesus spoke about this so strongly. Um, unforgiveness is truly a, a state of mind, a state of heart and energy that can literally attract demons. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. what else have you experienced after this? Uh, let's see. Uh, that same park. Um, this was a different year. You know, this is one of a more. This is a more recent, more recent experience. Um, I would say within the past four years. Um. There is a um, an island that is off of the mainland where this park is and where it um, where it backs up to the Missouri River and then there's a slough. Well, um, in the winter time, certain times of the year, the river level is really low, and so you can actually walk um, from the parking lot in the park down across the slough and you can walk over to this island. And um, I mean, it's not an inhabited island. It's just all woods. Um, I don't know if it's part of the park. Um, I don't even know if it's e even in the county. Um, but it has a name and it is named and uh I know there's been I've seen I've seen kids um wade across the slough and go over there. Um I was in one of those, you know, seasons of my life where I I was just exploring and so I said, "Well, you know what? I think I'm going to challenge myself today. I'm going to I'm going to try to walk to the other end of this island. I mean, you know, I had no idea how how far it was, but I'm I'm used to walking three, five miles more at a time. And I it just didn't matter to me. I just wanted to explore. And um so I did. Um I um stayed on the east side of the island and wanted to kind of stay along the east side but walk all the way to the other side to where I can see um the other part of the the Missouri River. So I did that. I um I walked more than halfway across and um as I was approaching to what I thought was probably my goal, which would be the other side of the island, I started feeling kind of creepy. 
And um, I walk out into an area where it was really clear. Um, it was just like a big, big opening. And the the island itself is just really, really heavily wooded. I don't even think you could even really traverse it in the summertime. Um, but as I walked out, I just, my spidey senses were kind of tingling and I just heard the loudest crack, kind of like the same crack that I explained before. It's a very distinctive sound. It sounds like the largest bat hitting a home run. And, um, it scared me. I, 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 at that point in time, I think I was familiar then with, um, Bigfoot and these types of encounters. And I just immediately, you know, gathered myself and started praying aloud, started praising God and, um, praising and and praying, um, the blood of Jesus Christ over the area Um, and the fear just left me and, um, but, (laughs) um, I didn't go any further because, um, I'm not stupid. (laughs) Um, I have no interest in in any encounters whatsoever. I don't, I don't seek these things out. So, um, just the sheer, it wasn't terror, but it was like a warning to me. It was like, um, I'll put the fear in you. And I felt it, but, um, I didn't let the fear consume me because I took it and I gave it to God. And I just out loud pro- pronounced the goodness of God and just was praying aloud. And I did that. I, did, I, um, ret- I retreated and I went back the way that I came Um, but I know very well, um, just the way that I felt and what I was sensing that was very real. Um, it was not a homeless person. I know that, you know, that is a a possibility. A homeless person couldn't make the sound. It literally, it sounded like a giant tree just snapping or cracking. And, um, I've heard trees fall in the woods and it's a scary sound, but you hear, you hear a snap, but then you hear it falling. You hear the aftermath. There's always other sounds. This was just a loud crack, like go away. And, um, yeah, so that, that was, that was in St. Louis County very, very close to, you know, I mean, not, it's not like in the, it wasn't in the middle of, um, you know, a neighborhood or anything, but close enough, close enough. I mean, you could see houses on the bluffs. So, um, you know, it's close to residential areas and it's, you know, close enough to the city of St. Louis. You just float a little bit down the river and there's the arch. So, um, this type of experience is not limited to, um, to the forest, the national forest. Um, so that, that opened my eyes even more that these beings, they have a way of traveling and being in places that maybe we can't explain in in our um, human physics science. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I've okay. seen these things in areas that couldn't support a creature. And I mean, you hear the stories all the time, like in areas in Florida where there's hardly any woods. And I know they have big state parks and national forests, but some of these Bigfoot encounters are in like, very small strips of wood surrounded by a bunch of houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's um, Scott Carpenter. Um, I remember him um, talking about 
is actually seeing these things around in his neighborhood. And, um, I know he lived close to the Smoky Mountains, but I mean, he lived in a neighborhood that looks just like the one I live in now. So I don't, I really, with supernatural creatures, you can't really impose the limited physical boundaries that we know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Seems like they yeah. can be anywhere. Right. And um, I think I'll I'll wrap it up here, but the um, the latest things, the most recent things that I've experienced have been uh, hoots uh, in the woods. Um, I recently had a very unfortunate incident happen where one of my favorite animals in my livestock was uh, killed. It was beheaded and it was a bit traumatic for me because this animal was like a pet to me, but it's very interesting. Um, uh, that evening I heard moaning almost as if it, um, and I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of different sounds in the woods. You know, living in the middle of the forest, you'll hear a lot of weird things. Um, but this was unlike anything I've heard. It sounded like a a woman sobbing and crying. Um, I just I did not want to get up and look. <laughs> I felt, you know, I've got a big spotlight. I can get up and, and look, but, um, you know, there was, the damage had been done. So it wasn't like if this was some sort of predator, um, you know, I could avert, you know, the, the danger, the damage was done. My livestock's dead. Um, so I was just laying in bed and I heard this and this was probably two thirty, three three o'clock in the morning. It's interesting. It's three o'clock in the morning is a very common time I've noticed for, um, things to happen. And, uh, so, uh, this was very recently, like in the new year. Um, some other things that have happened, um, one, one time, um, I went outside, um, at the cabin and was looking at the stars and, uh, was watching, I was, um, looking at how low you could actually see the stars. And then I was noticing, said to myself, wow, that one's really low and realized that the light was coming from the woods. And this was, I think, last summer. And uh, my first thought was, this is, this could be some person in the woods. But it just didn't make any sense because this is the summertime. And, you know, anybody who's been out in the woods, in the deep woods in the summertime, you, you really don't go walking around in the woods in the summertime uh, without, you just don't, you don't, you don't do that because you're going to be running into briars and stepping in holes and running into things. And this was, um, I gauged it on the property. So it did kind of freak me out. And I've got pictures of that too. Um, I don't know what you'll be able to do with it, but I will send you those pictures as well. Um, cause you can tell that you can see the stars and then you see a light in, in the trees. Um, the next day, uh, oh, and the light was, it wasn't moving. Cause I know a lot of people see orbs and I honestly, I've never seen an orb floating. I've caught like, I've caught orbs, um, on camera and, you know, those can be dust particles. So I don't really put a lot of, um, yeah, I don't put a lot of stock in in that, but this was a round light and it was just sitting there. And that's why I don't think it was anybody because 
a flashlight would not be that bright. It was as bright as the star. So um, I went out in the woods the next day um, because I wanted to see. I, I tried to place the trajectory of from where I saw it, where it exactly would be in the woods. And so I walked along the property um, up a hill to where I believe it could be to where I could see it. And I look up and all of a sudden there's these three dogs. It was really weird. Um, I've never seen these dogs before. And um, it startled me because I don't know if these dogs were wild and if they're going to attack me or what. But they were friendly. (laughs) Thank God they were friendly. Um, But I thought it was really weird. They just sort of appeared in the middle of the woods these three dogs. So that was um, a more recent experience. And um, yeah, I think my brain has come to the end of um, memory right now. Okay. Well, Diane, I appreciate you for sharing everything. And I could really relate to a lot of your encounters. And um, yeah, I mean, people like you that's the reason i started this channel and honestly i haven't had too many reports like yourself like mine and i've only had a few other people that actually spoke up about the cryptid and paranormal being tied in together and Mm -hmm. um i do feel like a lot of this stuff works off of um your state of mind your emotions and what you're going through and that that's not to say like, Oh, you were going through a hard time. So that's why you saw what you saw. I mean, like Mm -mm. this stuff can actually manifest depending on where you're at in life and what you're thinking about, what you're going through. And, um, Mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that I would experience was, I mean, you know, this is like personal stuff. So I don't like telling people, but like, you know, going through breakups and being alone in a house and just having like a negative mindset or blaming other people for my past mistakes. And, um, it seems like that's whenever I would be attacked. And, um, I do agree with like what you said about the Sasquatch. A lot of people think, Oh, you know, that's just an unknown primate living out there in the woods. I saw it. It had hair. It was using a deer trail it was hunting and eating physical food, but like they're not considering the fact that there's just not like enough physical evidence out there to say this is an unknown creature, which there are a lot of unknown animals that have not been discovered, but this is different because an animal living on this planet in the animal kingdom would not be cloaking, mind speaking, turning into orbs and um, Mm -hmm. showing up at your house 30 miles away or a hundred miles away. And um, right. following you around everywhere. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, thank God I'm, I don't believe I'm being followed, but I do know that, that, yeah, they, there are some people who are just more sense. I'm a hypersensitive person. So, you know, I, I've always been able to sense things and feel like when somebody shifts in their emotions, I could feel it. Um, so I, I do believe that, you know, this stuff is happening all around us. And that's why I say, you know, we are in a spiritual war and to not be so fixated on the stuff that we hear on the news, things that we see around us, because what really matters is what's going on in the eternity, the scope of eternity. And the souls and the spiritual realm. Um, that's where the the real the real war is. Yeah. And that's where it's always been. Um, but yeah, I really I do believe there's a reason why these ghost hunters go into dilapidated buildings where people were murdered. Because it's these it's that type of energy that these demonic energies are attracted to and you know and when we're weak and we are hurting um doesn't matter what we're hurting from the fact that we're hurting um that is like the roaring lion like scripture said you know satan roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour and it's 
it's the it's when you're weak. It's when you're weak that the enemy it's like it's like it is in the natural uh, wild. Um, the the predator is going to seek the weak ones because they're easy catch. So that's why, you know, my mission is to just inform people that there are ways of strengthening your spirit and, you know, um, protection that that is unlike any other that will indeed protect you from the true enemy, which is the darkness, the one who rules the darkness. So that's that's my ulterior motive in my mission. But um, it is good. Um, it is good to hear um, that, you know, somebody has similar experiences because um, that's just the way it is. I mean, we're communal creatures as well. And it 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 kind of sucks to think that you're the only one having these experiences. So I, I appreciate you, too. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. And I agree that these things will attack whenever you're weak, just like animals in the wild. And they will find places where there's been negative things that have taken place. And mm -hmm. um, recently I went to take some Bigfoot reports and um, travel to an area. And I found out that it wasn't just Bigfoot reports. Like what the guy was describing was seeing like these demons in a cabin and I that's where I was going to stay at. I was like, Oh man, you know, <laughs> I don't mind doing Bigfoot research, but I really don't want to stay in this cabin. And you could feel the energy in there. It felt like something was like pushing down on your shoulders, squeezing your head and you could just, yeah, you could feel the evil in that place. Mm -hmm. And, um, I did some research there for probably about four or five hours. And I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm not doing this. I went back down yeah. to his house and I was like, I'm staying here tonight. I'm not going back to that place. It's evil. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. I just felt like, you know, I got away from all this paranormal stuff a long time ago. I decided I'm not watching these ghost shows anymore. I'm not looking into this anymore. And, you know, it kind of moved to Bigfoot activity because that's what I was experiencing mm -hmm. at the time. But somehow, with the Bigfoot topic, I found myself doing paranormal research and yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it either. It's, um, you know, it attracts people. It does. And so, um, people think it's cool and neat and fun and it really isn't. There's nothing cool, neat or fun about it. So mm -hmm. it's actually very, very dangerous very dangerous so um yeah i appreciate that i i look forward to maybe talking to you more about some some of your your experiences and sounds like we have a little bit in common yeah absolutely and um contact mm -hmm. me anytime if you have any questions yeah. or if you just want to talk and yeah i yeah. do appreciate you for being a guest on the show and i hope this opens up people's minds about the paranormal and cryptid world that we live in Right. Yeah, I'll get those pictures sent to you, too. Okay, that sounds good. You have an awesome. excellent evening, Diane, and take care of yourself, my friend. Thank you. All and right. God bless you. Yep, God bless you, too. Be safe. Thank you. Yep. Mm, bye. All right, Diane, thank you very much for sharing your encounters and experiences with me. And I believe you 110%. These things really do happen, and a lot of times there's no answers for it. The creature or being that you took a photo of behind the leaf, that is creepy. It reminds me of the little demon that Satan's holding in the Passion of the Christ. And yeah, that's that's pretty freaky stuff. I appreciate you for sharing that with me and for coming on the show. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. And if you have an encounter of your own, please contact me sometime. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Take care and be safe.